Hey everyone, and welcome to your next episode of Cooking with the Cooking NP. Um, to con continue the uh, soup series, because uh, there's been so many requests for salt for some fall soups, I'm going to do a creamy butternut squash soup today. So what you're gonna need is some cubed up butternut squash, and so I've already uh, bought this pre-cubed. Uh, pre I got this at Costco. So we're gonna use our butternut squash. We have uh, half of a teaspoon of some dry thyme, some onion, three cloves of minced garlic, two teaspoons of minced ginger, three-fourths of a cup of unsweetened coconut milk, some white pepper, uh, a whole box of chicken stock, and we're gonna use a little bit of olive oil just to get things going here. So what we're gonna do here is turn on our heat on our stove um, to a medium-high temperature. And to that, we're going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. I count to about three for a tablespoon um, when it comes to just kind of pump, uh, dumping things into our, our soup pans. Um, you guys, I, I tend to be more of a dump and throw in kind of cook. Recipes are, are sometimes a, a foreign thing to me, but uh, um, I know not everybody can cook like that, and so um, we're gonna put our olive oil on heat and let it ripple. Once it comes to a ripple, we're going to add our onion and all of our uh, seasonings just to let them become aromatic. And when you can smell them, then you know it's time to add in the butternut squash. So we're gonna put in our onion here. Now, as I've said in some past videos, I'm not a big user or a lover of onion or like celery in that. I don't like crunch in my food. So fortunately for this soup, we're going to be blending it with our immersion blender. Um, but uh, this is a big change for me that I'm actually using real onion and not like dry onion flake. I'm just kind of weird like that. And so in goes our half a teaspoon of some dry thyme, our three cloves of minced garlic, and our two teaspoons of fresh ground up ginger. I'm actually taking the help of the grocery store with that ginger. Um, in the herb section of the grocery store, they have this, these little tubes of paste of different seasonings like garlic and ginger. And they had some ground up basil and whatnot. And so I'm like, hey, that is sweet. Then I don't have to worry about making uh, or dicing up and then um, mincing the ginger on my own. So we're getting this all put together here. As you can see here, it's coming to a nice, just browning it up until the onion gets a little soft. And then once that becomes soft, we're then going to add in our cubed butternut. Um, the recipe calls for about a medium size squash to be um, minced up and put into the pan here. This is definitely going to be more than a medium sized um, butternut squash. And so we're probably only going to add about half of the container of the butternut squash here. You know, our squash and our pumpkin, they're such great fall flavors. Um, everybody looks forward to them. We're just going to add a little bit more here and set the rest aside. And we're just gonna stir this into the onion and the thyme and the ginger just to give it a nice little flavoring. And then we're going to add in our four cups of chicken stock. Now, if you want to keep this more vegetarian or vegan, you can use vegetable stock if you would rather, um, but I don't have any vegetable stock on hand, and so we're gonna just use a good quality uh, chicken stock, and you're gonna use this whole container, and this is four cups worth of chicken stock. You're gonna use a little or a little less. You don't wanna completely cover up the entire amount of the butternut. So actually, it looks like I'm only gonna use about two cups worth um, it's that, or we could always add the rest of our butternut 
which we might as well, you know, because I don't know when I'm going to use that this week, so we might as well get rid of all of it. But you want the, the liquid level to be just slightly lower than the butternut squash so that it has its opportunity to reduce down um, and boil down. So we're going to turn on the heat here. It is already on, but we're going to turn it up a little bit higher, and we're going to let this come to a boil, and we're going to put the lid on it. So let this come to a boil. Once it's come to a boil, you're going to turn it down to medium low heat and you're going to let it simmer for about 20 minutes. Once that's done, we're going to um, take it off of the heat and add in our three fourths of a cup of coconut milk. And I, this is unsweetened coconut milk. And then we will break it down with the immersion blender. But we'll bring you back for those couple of steps here. So um, stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So our squash with the broth, the onion mixture, and our aromatics have been boiling and simmering on the stove now for about 25 minutes. And our squash is fork tender, as you can see. So we can, that's what a definition of fork tender is, is that you can stick a fork right through it. It goes nice and soft, there's no resistance. Um, and so I've shut the burner off because we don't want to add the coconut milk to um, a boiling liquid because it could certainly um, curdle it. So the, the heat has been off and to give it just a few more seconds, we're going to season our squash now with some salt and some ground white pepper. White pepper is a much more mild form of pepper and it just offers a very subtle heat to anything that you're making. And so we're going to add in a little white pepper. Um, because this recipe is void of a whole lot of protein, something that you could do is add some collagen peptides it will add some more protein to the soup, um, whether you add it in now or whether you're going to spoon out your serving size and then add it to your serving, you could certainly do that. I personally like the Vital Proteins collagen peptides. Um, there's 18 grams of protein per two scoops for this. And so as I'm serving this up for myself, that's something that I would do. You could also add in some chicken or some ham um, or some crumbled sausage if you'd like to add some protein to this soup as well. Or you can just enjoy it without any additional protein. Um, once uh, we add the coconut milk, we are going to then use our immersion blender to blend this up and make it smooth and creamy. This recipe is going to make approximately eight servings. There's going to be about 113 calories, 13 grams of net carbs, and only two grams of protein. So that's where I'm saying if you're looking for something that's a little more protein dense, you can certainly add the collagen peptides or any uh, sort of animal protein you'd like. Um, so we're going to just stir this together here a little bit, and we're going to get our immersion blender on here. There we go. It smells great. The uh, ginger smells really, really good. There goes in our coconut milk. You could certainly use half and half if you would like. If you're trying to keep this more vegan or vegetarian, again, using vegetable stock or the coconut milk, if that isn't of a concern to you, you could use the half and half and then I use the chicken stock. So in goes our emergent blender. And we're just gonna turn that on and just Gently tap it down. Stand back. It may squirt you in the face a little bit. And we're just going to immersion blend this until it is a nice, creamy texture. I hope you enjoy this great fall classic soup. We'll um, the recipe will be posted with all of the pics. Um, I can't wait. This is just exciting. I, this, I have to tell you, my husband bought me this immersion blender for this uh, particular recipe. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty lucky girl, guys. Um, I, he treats me really, really well. So I'm, I'm, have, I'm laughing because he's doing the pictures right now. And uh, I'm just, I get to use my new toy. So I hope you all have a great evening. Have a good one.